And uh, Bacon is going to be developing this uh, notion of empiricism. Francis Bacon is a British thinker, and he's a proponent of using science to improve humankind. And so he writes in a book called The New Atlantis how using science there will be all these breakthroughs that will improve how humans can live because scientists will discover all these things. He himself is not a scientist, but he's kind of he's a philosopher. Now his view is not rationalism, it's empiricism. And empiricism is the idea that truth is known through observation. Truth, truth is known through observation. Okay, so empirical anything basically means you have evidence for it, right? So evidence. And so basically, uh, he begins, uh, develops what's called the inductive method. And the inductive method is very similar to the scientific method that you know. The inductive method is this idea that we start with a general, sorry, we start with a very specific observation. And we have another specific observation and another specific observation. And after making many specific observations, then we can assert a general theory. And if that theory withstands all observations we can make, we can assert that it's true until something proves it false. So inductive method means going from specific to the general theory. Okay? In other words, uh, you could start with some idea like, um, you know, all animals have, no, you want to start with some specific things. So you look at that animal and you see that that animal has four limbs. And you look at your rabbit, four limbs, and the dog, four limbs, and humans, four limbs, and that, four limbs. And so then you can make a theory that all animals have four limbs. Okay, does that make sense? So that's the way it works. Now, do all animals have four limbs? No. No. What does it? Snakes. 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 You're right. Spiders. There's many examples. So how about all mammals? We were to say all mammals. Okay. So now let's divide. Now let's let's. Yeah, I know whales have like these fins, right? Do they have four limb fins? I don't. I don't think they do. The brain. I think the bottom. Anyway, this must be edited out, too. They're going to be wondering what we're talking about. No, I think they can get it from context. Okay, so now hear. let's contrast this with what was pop popular before. Besides the inductive method, the uh, opposition to that was the deductive method. And deductive method meant that you went from the general theory or the general truth to the specific. And this deductive method was very popular in the medieval way of learning known as scholasticism. And this is seen all the way back in the thinking of Aristotle, too. He uses the deductive method as well. Okay. So, but especially in medieval scholastics. For example, we start with the truth. God is all-knowing. And then we can deduce that God knows what will happen in our lives. Certainly that's what John Calvin does, predestination. Good. So, um, so that's the different views. And note that most of your um, religious class is using deductive method. Actually, math class uses deductive method too. Um, you don't normally think of this, but basically... It starts out with a theory that there are these numbers and there's, you know, all these things like they actually might exist somewhere. You can't. Uh, but you can't actually prove that the number three exists. Um, so, or that three, you know, or, you know, so it exists in this realm of ideas and then we deduce from, you know, who says that after nine 
you have to go to 10, like two digits, right? Why can't we have nine and then like sigma or some other like A, C, and then have 10, right? So we assume that we won't. That's just how it works. <laughs> That's just how, exactly. That's, yes, exactly, 10. How did you introduce but, yeah, anyway, so <laughs> that's um, the deductive method is, is used in math as well. But inductive method is used in science and in history, right? And we'll talk about why uh, in a second. Or empiricism is certainly used in history. So Newton's mechanical universe. This is really important because Newton and his discovery that there's universal laws of motion, this basically suggests that there doesn't need to be a god pushing the sun across the sky. Things are happening on their own. Uh, and so therefore, there is a universe that operates using mechanical principles, these mechanical rules uh, that humans can know. And so his, his laws of motion explain all motion except until the 20th century when like subatomic motion can't quite be explained by, um, by Newton. Um, but that's beyond my pay grade. <laughs> that's, that's too tough, too tough. So, so this, will, this, will, this is the root of that notion of deism that we see that's very popular during the Enlightenment, right? Deism is this idea that everything's just sort of following like clockwork. So there was a creator in the beginning that created these laws and said, this is how this will tick and this is how this will operate. And then it began and everything's following those laws and it's just happening. And so you see in the ideas of Descartes that this physical world can be measured. There's no God in this physical world, right? That's, there's God in our thinking substance. Right? There's spirit, that's our spiritual connection there. But in this actual world, there, there's no God, uh, you know, moving things around. There's no miracles, like, you know, that are moving stuff. And then you see in, in, in Newton, too, his ideas that everything's operating along mechanistic principles. And so you really understand how these scientific ideas then are going to affect religion and lead to the idea of deism. Okay. Okay.